Arduino was created to make the joy of circuitry and hobby electronics more accessible to the average person. It is significantly easier to use than pouring through data sheets for hours on end, but even still, sometimes doing simple things in Arduino can be a little bit challenging if you've never done anything like this before. And my goal is to make it more simple for the average person to access, access, access Arduino uh, and figure things out. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because I am working on this sign, this little LED sign for my son. So I'm going to teach you everything about how to make this sign, including how to wire it, how to program it, and how to model and 3D print this little box and how to replace it with your own graphics. So stay tuned for those videos if you're interested. Please subscribe, consider liking, that kind of stuff. So there are two simple ways to read the state of an Arduino pin. But to understand that, I want you to think about this first. You may have heard that binary is zeros and ones. And that's how computers, you know, think or speak. But what does that mean? Well, computers or anything that performs computing has what's called a logic level. That means if it is at 5 volts, that is equivalent to a 1. That is your 1. And if there's no voltage, if it's at 0 volts, that is a 0. So that is logistically where the zeros and 1s come from. And Arduino is no different. The first of the two ways that I mentioned to read the state of a pin is digital read. Digital read on a digital pin will give you either a zero or a one, or a high or a low reading, indicating whether the voltage at the pin is at five volts or not. Analog read is interesting because it will actually read what the voltage on that pin is, and then convert it to a number that's between zero and 1023. So if you had 2.5 volts going into one of your analog pins, and then you did an analog read function on that pin, you would get somewhere around 512 as your result. I'm going to be using an analog pin in this project for wiring, so if I do an analog read on that pin, it will give me a value of 1023 if it's high, and it will give me a value of 0 if there's no voltage on that pin, or if the button is not pressed, is how I'm going to wire it up. You can also do a digital read on an analog pin, but you cannot do the opposite. You cannot do an analog read on a digital pin. So if we wanted to, we could write in the code to do a digital read on this pin instead, and it would give us either a zero or a one if it's pressed or not. In fact, that's probably preferable because all we can, we, you know, the button's not going to have any granularity between whether or not it's pressed. It's just going to be pressed or not, right? That's binary, zero or one. So, but that's obviously, that depends on your project and what you want for it. This is one of those little tiny buttons that comes with a lot of Arduino starter kits that fits into breadboards. So you'll notice that the button has four pins, and there's two pins on each side. Pins that are opposite each other are always connected. And when you press the button down, what happens is it connects all four pins so that they all have connectivity between each other. And per adventure, that explanation didn't really make sense. You can get out your multimeter and set it to resistance mode. So that's how I usually test my button. Here, I'll show you. You know what? I'm just gonna draw this in MS Paint. It'll be easier. There we go, okay. Dude, I feel like a wizard with MS Paint now. This is dope. So here's, here's the point that I'm making though. These two pins are connected, even when it's not pressed, as are these two pins. Oops, there we go. But when you press it, this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin, are all connected. Thank you, MS Paint. Now, at first glance, this may seem kind of counterintuitive, but you'll see why this matters in a second. Okay, so this might be a little meta to have like six camera angles going on here, but I figure that this is preferable to risking that the video is not in sync with real life because you're gonna be doing it in real time, right? So I want you to see me doing it from every angle in real time. So for the setup here, we're just gonna set up the code first. We're going to do, of course, serial.begin 9600. That just sets our serial rate so that we can see what the pin is doing, or what, sorry, what the serial monitor input is doing. And then we're going to declare our pin mode, and I said that I'm gonna be using pin A1, and we're gonna set it up as an input. Okay, and so in our main loop, what are we gonna do? We're just going to do, we're just going to do a serial print line for, and we'll start with digital read maybe, just because it's zero and one, might be a little bit easier. Digital read of A1, and that is it. And then maybe delay 50. We're going to upload that to the board. Let's grab a pin from A1 and put that onto our button. Now we're going to grab a ground pin and put that nearby. This is a 5,000 ohm resistor. I'm using this because I don't want to short five volts down to ground. You can look up the maximum current draw from an Arduino and calculate using Ohm's law. I like to use ohmslawcalculator.com just to be safe. I know it's a simple calculation, but I just try to leave as little room for stupidity as possible. Then we're going to have that pin and ground connected through the resistor, and then grab five volts and put it on the other side of the button. 
Now you can already see that our serial, well, this is the serial plotter, the serial monitor and the serial plotter are basically the same thing, but this one's just easier to visualize. You can see that it is now graphing a straight line at zero. That is great. That means that our pin is stable. It'll become more apparent when we do an analog read how bad floating pins are to read. So you can see now when I press this button, it goes up to one, and when I let go of it, it goes back down to zero. Now this, re this resistor right here is imperative because if you think about this circuit right here, what we would otherwise have if this resistor was not here is every time we close the connection by pressing the button, five volts gets just shorted out to ground, right? You're just gonna fry your Arduino. Five kilo ohms might be a little bit uh, overkill, but I prefer to be overkill than underkill. So that's great, that's working just fine. So now we're going to do an analog read for the same pin. You don't have to change a thing, you just change it to analog read. And you can see the scale is still at zero, but once we press it, then it will go all the way to 1023. So you can see it's basically the same thing, it's just a much bigger jump. And now just to show you once more, if you take away the pin that's connecting it to ground, right? Because this pin, even if the button is not pressed, it's at least connected to ground. Look at it go, I mean, it just, it just does whatever it wants. So I have no idea why it does that, but point being that you need it tied to something, right? When it's, t when it's here, even when the button is not pressed, it's at least going to ground. And that's exactly what we want, just to make sure that our inputs are very robust. Now, what I'm also going to throw in the mix here is a five millimeter clear LED. This is just to make it very obvious when our Arduino is doing the thing that we want it to be doing. You can see at a glance, in the peripheral of your eyes, whether or not the LED is lit. These LEDs, they do have a little notch taken out of them. I've tried to show on the camera, but it just never shows up. The side that is the negative end of the LED will have a little notch taken out of it. If you look very closely, you can see it. Additionally, the longer leg is usually the positive leg. So we're just going to wire that right here. And you know what? I'm just gonna show you my workflow. What I'm going to do is five millimeter LED current draw. And a quick Google search tells me that it's about 20 milliamps. Now we're going to do Arduino maximum current draw per pin. Each pin can provide or receive a maximum of 40 milliamps. So we know that this LED can be powered through our Arduino. You probably want to use a resistor when you're doing this. I'm not going to just because I'm lazy here and I know that it's going to be fine because I've done this before. But the correct way to do it would be to use a resistor. So we're going to create a new variable in our setup. Let's just say LED or int LED state equals zero. And we'll also do an int for button state equals zero. And rather than just printing the state of that pin, what we're going to do instead is we're going to do button state equals, we'll do digital read of a one. So now what we want it to do is, if the button state is one, we want it to change the state of the LED, right? So if button state equals equals one, open brackets, let's type, actually within that, we want it to change the state of the LED. So within this, if button state is one, we're going to check and see if the LED state equals zero, we're going to change LED state to one, and else if LED state equals equals one, we're going to change LED state to zero. Okay, so now we have this routine that checks whether or not the LED, you know, it, it will change all of our variables, but we need to change our variables so that they actually mean something. So what we're going to do is we're going to set another pin, pin mode, maybe we'll do, we'll use digital pin two for this as output. So now I'm just writing to see if our LED state is zero, we want to make sure the LED is off. So we're going to do digital write pin two low else otherwise digital write pin two as high. Increase the delay a little bit just because, well, you'll, you'll see the problem that we're gonna have here in a second. I already know what's gonna, what's gonna happen with this. My bad, that was a dumb mistake. That needs to not be in the setup. That needs to be a global parameter. Okay, so we've now uploaded that, and you know what I've just realized in terms of the wiring is that we can steal the negative terminal from the one that's already going to ground. So we can hook that up in there. And then for the positive terminal of the LED, we can put that into pin number two. So now if you can see, that just turned our LED on. If you press it again, it turns it off. So the issue here that you're seeing, the reason sometimes it doesn't work, and uh, I'm gonna leave you to, to figure this one out on your own, 
it's not hard. It's, this is what's called a debouncing issue. So the reason is because it's checking. I have the delay set to 100 milliseconds. So what's happening is we have to make sure the button is pressed at the time that it checks and for no longer than that because if it checks once, the button is on, okay, it changes the state to zero. And then if it checks again and we haven't let go of the button yet because 100 milliseconds is not that very long of a period of time, then it's going to change the button back to off again. So what you're going to see is nothing happens because in the time that it was checking, you know, maybe it flickers or something, but it's this is a debouncing issue. What you want is something to read the state of the button and say, okay, if, if, if I have changed you know, less than a second ago, don't change it this time. But if you're quick with it, this little example works well enough, you know, well enough to get you started and then you can figure out the rest. So that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new. This is a little bit higher production than my videos tend to be. So if you did like this type of video, I would really appreciate a like. And if you are new here, please tell me if my videos suck. <laughs> and other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day.